So I'll do the start of the show and then you take us into the first item. No, no, no. Let's change the plan. Lauren James is making a debut appearance on the show. Let's let her mix it up a little bit. She's only been in here for six minutes and she's already making a big impression. Take it away, LJ. This is the Lionesses down on dock, connected by EE. E. Hello and welcome back to Lionesses Down Under, connected by EE. E. Look who we have with <laughs> us. It's LJ, the goal scorer from last night. Welcome, Lauren. You okay? Oh, good. good. It's good. good to have you here. It's even better to have six points on the board as well. And of course, we want you to get in touch. Use the hashtag Lionesses Down Under. Any messages of support, any questions for Lauren, or you just want to see how we're feeling in the studio, well, make sure you send them. As I said, use that hashtag Lionesses Down Under. We want to hear from you. So, Lauren, 1 0 win over Denmark yesterday in a great position in that group. You must be happy with that. Yeah, buzzing. Yesterday I was over the moon. Um, yeah, just happy to be able to score goals and help the team. Yeah, I can tell by that smile on your face right there how much it meant. So you'll get into that in a little bit. But let's talk about your debut uh, in a World Cup because, I mean, if there's one way to go, you get ready, you get out there, you kick off. Six minutes in, this happens. I mean, that has got to be absolutely perfect. That's what World Cup debuts are dreamed of. <laughs> Yeah, it was a dream to be fair. It's something that just keeps going on over and over in your mind. You just replay it. Yeah. This is definitely the sort of thing that every young kid dreams of. I'm sure when Lauren James was young, this was her dream. And what a finish it was as well. It was such a good finish to score in that way. And obviously we keep getting people getting in touch and asking questions. And we had a lot for you. So Grace wants to know, how does it feel to score on your first World Cup start? I think that picture says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> it was a massive relief, I'd say. Just a big dream come true. Yeah. Obviously a proud moment. Yeah. Talk to me about minutes or seconds before this moment. All right, as soon as you struck the ball, I see you run off straight away. Did you know yeah. it was going in <laughs> it there? It was kind of through the motion. <laughs> the way I... I think the way I shot, I kind of like just kept following through and then as soon as it hit the net, I just played it out. I <laughs> saw that. And then seconds after this, we've got to talk about the celebration because you were lying on the floor. My knees actually yeah. caught from that. <laughs> I saw the knee slide and then you were on the floor, but it just like absolute elation from everyone. You could see how proud all your teammates were. Look, and look at, at the smile down there as well. What a moment that is. Yeah, it was good. It was... I just think everyone, to be fair, before the game, a few players were saying, like, I think you're going to have a moment today. And yeah. I was like, I just hope so. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, you definitely did that. And Jill, you had a few moments as well, because after the match, you were actually on the bus on the way home, yeah. on the way back to Terrigal with all the players. What was that like? Everyone was... It looked like everyone was buzzing anyway. I've got a bit of a confession. I was meant to come back with you. You was? And I made out that I couldn't get out of the stadium because I wanted to be on the bus okay. with me. I see how but, it is. I see how it is. Okay, yeah. okay, all right. But I have to clarify that Katie Zellum as DJ, yes, very good. So we were singing some songs. Everybody was in a good mood. And yeah, it was great to be at the back of the bus again. <laughs> it definitely was. And I mean, for you... Do you sit on that bus and kind of take it all in and just think about what's actually just happened that evening? Yeah, I think I take it all in, whether it's going to training or, you know, going to a game or even after a game. Just, I like to make memories and remember to live in the moment. Yeah. And Lauren, you were gliding past defenders yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Little step over, <laughs> touch the ball. Well, I could believe it because you do it all the time. <laughs> but did you feel confident? Did you feel like you were causing Denmark problems? Yeah, I felt confident. I think from coming on the last game, I think that obviously helped because I got a feel, feel for it then. Yeah. And then, yeah, I thought it was my, another chance to obviously take and... Obviously, I wanted to take it. Yeah. You definitely did that. You did your job. You're scoring the goals. Let's talk about the defenders, though, because 1-0 mm. in the end, the second half, there was a few chances for Denmark, but 
those defenders, they did their job. It's just as important, isn't it? As a centre-back myself, you know, uh, as a defender, <laughs> I've got to say, their job was so important. Lucy Bronze, the shift she put in, unbelievable last night. Yeah, she's a great defender. Um, I mean, going forward and back, um, obviously, with how athletic she is, it makes a massive difference to whether she's the other end of the pitch or whether she's back helping to defend. And yeah. yesterday she's shown that. And it was physical. It was so physical was. that first half. I was right where Lucy was going in for some tasty challenges. Did you expect that Denmark were going to be that physical going into it? I think we knew there was obviously a hard-working team, but I, I don't think we expected them to be that physical from that like, minute one. Um, yeah. But I think but the last two games have both been physical and like, yeah. not easy. Yeah, that's international football, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is international football. So six points from six, which is the best the Lionesses could have hoped for, but the job isn't quite done yet. Has the focus shifted to the China game or was today a bit of a recovery day and kind of reset a little bit? Yeah, today we just used it as a reset and recover and then tomorrow I think we start focusing on China. Yeah, your smile's so infectious. I just look at that picture and I just want to... Smile back at you. <laughs> <Like this. laughs> you just mentioned there, tomorrow it's back to work for the team ahead of that China game on Tuesday. I mean, talk to us about training whilst you've been here. Slightly different setting. We're in Australia. The sun's always shining. Are you enjoying it, even if you've got to do the sled pushes and get the hard work in? Yeah, no, I've been loving it. Obviously, it's helped with having the sunshine around, palm trees. <laughs> a bit of difference to St George's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's been really good. And obviously having days like that day where we had fans come down and yeah. it was a good atmosphere. Yeah, there were so many people there, wasn't there? What a strike that is, by the way. Oh. Everyone was, I don't know if you've seen it. You might Got have seen it on social Jill, media. didn't I? Oh. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Can we get a recording of that, please? A recording of that. Everyone was talking about that on socials, honestly, yeah. Oh. Some uh, incredible strikes in There's there. There's more people turning up to watch you training than did to watch me playing games. <laughs> <laughs> Put it that way. Um, so we've already spoken a little bit about Lucy Bronze. We've kind of seen that she's taken you under our wing. It's been great to see your friendship grow, especially on social media and stuff like that. How is Lucy... Look at that picture. <laughs> I'd like to caption that, actually. <laughs> but how is Lucy um, kind of... Has she offered you any advice um, just to help you settle into the, the England team? I think she just... She knows that I know she's always there if, if I need... The help or if I've got any questions and yeah I think she's easy to go to if I yeah. do have questions and yeah it's strange because we get on so well but we're like 10, 10 11 years apart yeah uh, <laughs> do you ask her a serious question and then she just points and laughs yeah is that it no I think <laughs> she's always coming out with something and I'm like what <laughs> uh, and obviously on the pitch I mean she's got so much experience she's been there she's been to so many major tournaments as well you talked a little bit about her as a player surely you must rate her uh, in training, difficult to take on. Are you trying to get the best of her in, in training at times? Yeah, because you know, you know what Lucy's like. She's very competitive. <laughs> she always wants to win, and obviously, don't want to get beat. Um, part of being a defender, and obviously, yeah, a footballer for so many years as well. Them training battles can get heated, you know. I can imagine. Can't yeah, they? watch some of them as well. Yeah, they, they definitely can. do. Yeah. So yeah, again, we've had people getting in touch. So Abril on Insta wanted to ask you: Can you describe Lucy in one word? Got to keep it clean. Uh, by the way, I will say <laughs> that. Yeah, I saw your mind racing there. Yeah. Just one word. It's difficult. Wild. Wild. Yeah. Oh, I like that one, Jill. How would you describe Lucy? Oh, putting you on the I spot think, now. I think crazy. Crazy, crazy time, and wild. Yeah. Right? Crazy and wild. But also, if I had to choose a serious one, professional. Definitely, yeah. yeah, you've seen that. Right, on that note, anyway, we've had plenty of people getting in touch. Hashtag Lionesses down under. We want to hear from you. Ruby has got in touch to ask, how does it feel to be part of a team who are inspiring the next generation of Lionesses? Yeah, I think when you obviously take a step back from it, uh, it makes you realise on, you know, the changes and how inspiring the team is towards everyone and the young girls growing up. Um, and to think that I'm a part of it, it's obviously a good feeling and 
yeah, I just hope to help the younger girls growing up as well. Yeah, it's mad you saying that because I just think of you as being a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, I'm saying and I'm like, I'm still young myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and although we are far from home here in Australia, obviously a bit of an understatement one, the other side of the world, the team have had plenty of love from back home, especially from the proudest brother in England this morning, I think. So your brother and fellow England player, Rhys James, he posted this with the caption, proud. How lovely is that? Yeah, it was very cute. Oh, <laughs> that is such a lovely picture. I think it's given us goosebumps. Yeah, I was trying to dissect this photo because you're obviously kicking, all right? So is this part of like a one-two you just put him through or something like that? Yeah, you'll, well, you'll remember it, I'm sure, but playing together, it looks like... Or yeah, maybe just... I'm... Thinking about kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is such a lovely picture. It really though, isn't is. It? How, how old are you both in that photo? Do you know? I think Reese was seven and I was. I must have been six. Okay. Yeah. Where was it taken? I mean, I'm just. I'm trying to get so many different facts from this photo. It's so nice. No, I think it was a tournament. We just used to play tournaments when we was younger. Really. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I try always play with the boys. Yeah. Bring back the hair, by the way. Bring back the hair. I'm loving that, definitely. They didn't need any other teammates. It's just them, yeah, them, two, two. Yeah, yeah. them two playing in the tournament <laughs> against everyone else. So, Reese wasn't the only member of the Three Lions who was absolutely loving the match. I am so jealous of this next post. My hero, David Beckham, he must have been up at 5am in the morning to watch the game, obviously, from Miami. And he posted this and said, great goal, Lauren. How does that feel to have David Beckham, England legend, Poston? That was a bit like, is that actually real? <laughs> <laughs> when you see the mention in the yeah, title on Instagram, like, yeah, yeah. Am I reading that right? <laughs> well, you're like, um, my followers might have gone up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh. No, it was just obviously a proud moment. And it's just a bit like, wow, that, you know, someone like that who obviously had a great career has seen it as well. Yeah. yeah. One great number seven to another. There you are. Uh, and we had plenty of love as well coming in from the Lionesses sisterhood, all right. Farrah Williams tweeted, that's my girl. All right, Lauren James. Carly Telford tweeted, Lauren James. And then she had some emojis, all right. I'll describe them. Blue heart, uh, puff of air emoji, and the star eyes emoji uh, as well. And then Leah Williamson posted this photo of you on Instagram with the caption, she knew. <laughs> referring to that look on your face right there. So come on, tell us, did you know something was about to go down last night? Did you feel it? Did you have your shooting boots on? Yeah, I had a feeling. I think um, just throughout the day, I was just like, I don't shoot enough. So I thought when I have a shot tonight, I'm just going to take it. Oh, well, from every England fan out there, please keep shooting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and despite going off injured, Kira Walsh was on Instagram after the final whistle with this one, which reads, my girls and just a load of hearts. Look at that. So yes. nice from her. The support definitely is there. And of course, we're sending lots of love to Kira and lots of hearts as well to her. Jill, you did see her last night. How's she doing? Yeah, she was in good spirits, wasn't she? Obviously, we don't know the extent of the injury yet, so fingers crossed for her that it's that it's better news. Um, and yeah, I think for Kira, because she's such a team player, she was just absolutely buzzing that the girls got the three points, I think, heading into that game. I think all the girls are so humble and so grounded that they're not really... It's not about their individual performances, it's just about the team, and I think that's what shines through about this current group of lionesses. So, yeah, we we'll hope Kira gets good news. Definitely, yeah. yeah, we do. And, I mean, there's been plenty of support, not just from all the players or um, the England family, fans mm -hmm. as well, Jill. Yeah, exactly. Lots of support in Sydney. So, obviously, I was very fortunate that I could go to the game as a fan. I've still got my hoodie on. <laughs> and even one of the fans made us this lovely bracelet. I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah, nice. I know. Uh, yeah. I just went around picking up freebies. Um, <laughs> So the Football Supporters Association sent us this video of fans gathering in Sydney before the match, singing a very familiar tune. Let's have a look. Sweet Caroline, bop, bop, oh, yeah. <laughs> so good, so good, so good. Ah. 
I mean, you can't help but sing along to that. And obviously they were doing it. Big thank you, we've got to say, to all of the supporters yeah. who have travelled, all the supporters that were in the stadium. I mean, there were so many England shirts there in and around the stadium, the whole day throughout Sydney, as you said, there's so many fans. Lauren, how does it feel knowing that we're on the other side of the world, 10,500 miles away? I mean, you've got all of that support still with you in the stadium. How does that feel? Yeah, I think it's crazy and it's obviously played a massive part. Um, but yeah, I think even after the first game, it's the atmosphere has felt like we're playing at home. And yeah. obviously that helps. And it showed that last year at the Euros. Definitely did, and we're building. I'm sure there'll be plenty more support on Tuesday and then going through in the tournament as well. Fingers crossed, I know that all the England fans will be there. Right, we've talked about the support that's here. Let's get back to closer to home, all right? Because on the other side of the world, well, I'm pleased to say that we're now joined by an absolute Lioness legend, all right? Faye White, thank you for joining us on Lioness Down Under. It's great to see you. How are you? Are you having a good start to your day? It's quite early in England, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, how am I? I'm tired because it's, I get up early to, to see, say hello and be part of the show. And yeah, no, um, it's, it's just great to kind of, I'm still having a buzz of watching the girls last night and the team do so well. And obviously that that young girl lay on, on your sofa, sat on your sofa, having, you know, just lit the world up is fantastic to see. We should maybe let her lie down after that performance yeah. yesterday. <laughs> um, but what did you make of the performance, fair? Yeah, well, I think the first 25 minutes, um, I don't think Denmark could have a, a kick, could they? And they didn't get in our box. And we just had so much control. And I, I kind of felt like, well, this is the Lionesses team that, you know, we know can really purr and tick. Um, so, and then obviously Lauren did that amazing strike and got me off my seat at home, <laughs> cheering. And uh, yeah, no, but then obviously I think Denmark did come into it. We knew it would be always tough. You know, they're a higher ranked team than Haiti, but I think the team have done brilliantly. We know what it's like, Jill, don't we? Big tournaments, those first few games, especially that first game, it can be quite nervy, just wouldn't get the job done. So, yeah, if I was in that camp and we'd got six points, we would be, you know, pretty proud and elated that, you know, we know that we can progress. Yeah, definitely. And we talked about the goals, but you did mention Denmark did come back into the game. And not only have England now got two wins, they've also got two clean sheets. How important are those when it comes to big tournament football? Yeah, well, obviously, I heard you saying you're, you're a defender, you've got to stick up for them, likewise. <laughs> and, you know, for us, keeping clean sheets is just like, you know, scoring a screamer. And obviously Mary did so brilliantly in that first game, a couple of vital saves at the end that she needed to pull out. Um, and yeah, it's just keeping switched on, isn't it? We've seen that the back line has had a few adjustments in the, in the games um, and it can always be hard to kind of get that connection between you uh, as a unit. But I think, you know, they're doing well. Obviously Rachel Daly did brilliantly again coming in. I, I kind of felt that she would have an impact in this tournament and where whether that was up front with Aluso, but I think it well actually she you know did so brilliantly in the Euros at left back. I think she could do a vital job for us there. And you know if that was a position in Serena's mind that she wasn't quite sure of. And she with Lauren, I mean Lauren, you look like you two been playing together for for years. The way you just connected and you were drifting and she would overlap. And did you, did you have a chat before the game about that or just natural? No, I think um, I've been quite close with Rachel for since I've come into the team and I think that helps when you're on the pitch together and we kind of just said let each other be free and yesterday that showed that and it'll, whoever goes forward will just cover for each other. Yeah. That's, That's nice, nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. That's nice. I'll do a bit of work, you do a bit of work. Like me and you, that. There we go. <laughs> so, Faye, LJ came up through the Arsenal Academy. Did the team there know she was destined to make an impact on the game? Yeah, when I was in the team and captain, and we, I always used to go and watch um, Academy games and, you know, Centre of Excellence games. And there was always this talk of this young player in the ranks that would come through and uh, yeah, do brilliantly and look at look at where she's got to. Obviously, I watched it in the WSL against the Chelsea as well. And um, I remember coming and watching it was City. I think you were playing City at the start of last season. And I think you scored a very similar goal, driving in off the wing and, and putting it in the back of the net. And yeah, I was just amazed of how 
post control that Lauren has and the ability that other players just can't seem to get the ball off her. It just seems to stick to her, her foot. And uh, yeah, it's just great that she has so much awareness of her positioning and you know just how to calm the game down as well at times. Even yesterday, your first World Cup game, and, and you managed to do that. Just think, well, I don't always need to attack. I can pass it, keep possession. But yeah, we always knew there was this young player that was going to come through and would go far. And you know, oh, we don't want to talk. To, to we don't want to talk about goals team. against City, Fair. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Rubbing it in. <laughs> now, Faye, it's not just Lauren who you know of. Of course, you know our very own Jill Scott as well. So I couldn't get you on here and not have you tell us quite a few stories. Oh, All right. No. I went through the archives. What a picture. I got this photo. <laughs> uh, so come on then, Faye. You played with Jill. What was she like? Have you got any good stories for us? Oh, no. Well, again, Jill was one of those players that come into the squad and made such, you know, an impact, but off the field in more ways than on the field in oh, a way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jill. No, I do okay. like to remember having battles at training with her. And, um, you know, she, you knew she would go on and, and do well. But my, my, most of my memories are having... Because she was always a player that stood up in big games and scored vital goals. Mm. And obviously, I think it was France, the court, uh, court final you scored, didn't you? Yeah. Um, you know, also in the Euro semi-final mm. in 2009. But, yeah, I just remember trying to catch her up, really, to jump on her back and celebrate. But, <laughs> you know, Jill was always one that kept the, the mood in the camp brilliantly, as we all know now, don't we? And, and Lauren would have, I'm sure, seen that as well. Oh, but, yeah, nice. Jill were... Uh, you know, she's a special player and a special person as well. Oh, I'll take that. Thank you. You redeemed yourself. All right, you yeah. redeemed yourself. <laughs> Faye, Faye was a, a warrior. I remember she'd have broken nose, broken cheekbone. She left, I think it was the Euros, wasn't it, to go and kind of get her face, like, fixed and then come back and play in the Euros final. Wow. How mad is that? A true, true warrior, Faye. Well, yeah, well, after that, actually, I remember trying to keep away from you because I knew you'd make some wise crack or when I'd done my face after that game because I thought Jill would make me laugh and it hurt when I laughed so I was like I thought Jill just please don't make me giggle or I'd laugh because, oh. yeah is that why you hung around with that. um Farrah Williams for the rest of that camp <laughs> Uh, what was that? Is that why you hung around with Farrah Williams for the rest of that camp? <laughs> so you didn't have to laugh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was actually going through the archives, as I mentioned, and I got that photo up. What about this one, though? Because uh, Jill has always had a soft spot for you. I think it's safe to say, Faye. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, I hope you can see that right there. Bunch of roses, and of course, she's, uh, she's found you to give you one of those in an airport, I think, as well. Jill, talk us through this. I think it was Valentine's Day, and we were on camp. Obviously, I knew the girls would all be missing the partners, so I bought everybody a rose. See how nice I was? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean... I very romantic, yeah, right exactly. there. Very, very, very nice. All right, so let's get back to the football, Faye, just while we've got you. Uh, what are your hopes for England in this tournament? Um, well, I've, I've always backed the team. I always believe in them. I thought they, you know, will do well in the Euros and knew we had the squad and the talent to go to all the way, and they did it. And I think that you just got to believe. It's that belief, isn't it? I think the team have that nowadays with Serena in charge. Um, and the quality with the young players like likes of Lauren coming through, that, you know, we're in a good place and we, we can compete with any team in the world. And that is such a proud thing to be able to say nowadays. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously a bit, bit of a downer with, with Kira being injured and hopefully, fingers crossed, that she is OK and doing a what OK and it's not too serious, but it didn't look great. But, yeah, I think they've still got to believe. I think sometimes that can galvanise. A team, can't it? It can make them want to play for even more of a bigger reason. And um, if she isn't able to continue, then maybe that's something that will just drive the team on even more than obviously wanting to win a World Cup. Yeah. OK, Fair. Well, thanks for coming on. Lioness is down under. A real honour to have you on the show and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Now, here on Lioness is Down Under, we love to hear from you guys at home, all right? You always get in touch with us. You're always on the hashtag Lioness is Down Under. And let me tell you, you did not disappoint once again. We asked for uh, your burning questions to Lauren, and we asked you to get in touch, and you did that. So, Lauren, Jill's got a few of them. Are you ready to take on the questions? Yeah. Let's okay. do it. Quick fire. Millie on Insta says, you always keep 
composure on the pitch, how do you keep your cool? <laughs> I think I'm just so laid back, so <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I kind of just live life as whatever happens, happens. Like, yeah. Do you get nerves though? Because it did look like last night you were just enjoying yourself, but I was like, if I was in there, 40,000 plus people in the stadium, I'd be terrified, but you obviously do it week in, week out. Do you still get a little bit of butterflies? Yeah, I think I do, but before, like, as soon as I go out to warm up, everything's gone. Oh, nice, OK. Um, yeah. But it obviously makes a difference, because I remember like, a few years ago, my nerves were, like, through the roof, like, the ball would go under my foot, and I'd be like, oh, my God, it's my first touch. <laughs> I don't believe that. Yeah, yeah, that's me every week, yeah, don't worry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Catherine asks, who is the loudest on the bus? Rachel. Rachel Daly, oh, good one. And Martha on Insta wants to know, I don't know if you've seen this, but Alex Greenwood actually said you're the worst tea maker. And she wants to know, are you offended by that? Very. <laughs> Very offended. <laughs> Why? Why am I the worst tea maker? <laughs> I don't know. But Ellie did say you make the best peppermint tea. Can you talk us through how you make a peppermint tea? Um... I just leave the tea bag in for a couple of minutes, put a bit of honey in, take the tea bag out. Oh, a oh, bit of honey. honey. All right, OK, yeah. that's a secret. Because we were thinking, just put tea the tea bag, bag in, in that's that. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A bit of honey, <laughs> there we are. Honey. All right, oh. so that's the end of the quick fire questions. But it's not the end of the questions because we've got some from your teammates, all right? We always get them to write some questions uh, for the next guest on Lionesses Down Under. Completely anonymous, you get to choose. So you can pick any, any one of them. Open it up for us, all right? Read the question out and uh, you can answer it, but we won't know who it's from. You know what I always notice at this point? How they've all got really good nails. I know, every time. I need yeah, to get yeah. mine done. <laughs> Do you want to come with us? Go to uh, Katie Zell. She's got a whole kit. Has she? Oh, really? She's she didn't mention kit. that on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Right, what's the question say? What's the most sensible thing you've ever heard someone say? Most sensible? Wow. Oh, that's a difficult that one. Kind of... Any advice anybody give you when you were younger, coaches or family members? You're so laid back even answering oh, yeah, these yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most sensible thing. Um, maybe you telling me to keep doing my recovery. Oh, OK. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, She's still doing it now that. as well. Yeah, Can yeah. we keep recording these clips? <laughs> <laughs> So, Lauren, we have got another question for you. I know you're in recovery mode, but we've got a little bit of a physical challenge for you. Are you up for it? Yeah. Yeah, OK. So, are you up for taking on... Dum, dum, dum! I have to keep doing that. <laughs> the tower. You up for it? Yeah, let's go. Right, <laughs> let's go. Here's a quick reminder for everyone at home how you play the tower. The player will have 30 seconds to carefully remove blocks and place them on top of the tower. The more blocks you move, the taller the tower and the more points you score. Five points are awarded for each complete level built during the 30 seconds. Look out for the special golden blocks hidden in the tower that are worth an extra 10 points if you can stack them in time. But be very careful, because if you tumble, the tower will tumble and you'll score zero points. So Lionesses, are you ready to face the tower? Right, well, here we go, the tower. We've explained it, but we'll explain it again, just in no, case you didn't more. hear that, because we want everyone to have a fair chance and we don't want us to be blamed, all right, yeah. after the 30 seconds, OK? So, Jill, got the rules? Yeah, so 30 seconds to build the tower as high as you can using two blocks at a time. OK, so obviously go quick, try and get them out. You don't want the tower to tumble, OK? So if you want to stop at any point, just say the word freeze, but that's boring. No one wants to do that. Okay. And I will say this, all right, Katie might have great nails. Wasn't too good at the tower, all right? But what I will say, she had a great start, but she didn't keep that rhythm up, all right? So uh, a top tip, don't tell anyone I've told you this, have a tap for the loose blocks, yeah. all right? You only need to get two, and the golden ones, they're worth 10 points, all right? That is how you build the tower, and that's how you're successful. You feeling good? Yeah. 30 seconds on the clock. Jill, 
three, two, one, go! Right, here we go, straight for the golden one. Can but you've realised. No. No, you can't one. take that one. Quick, no, don't be. It's go moving, it's going to tumble. Go, go, go for a different down. one. Go for a different one. <laughs> tap them, tap them. You've had 10 seconds, you've never got one up. Come on, come on. I know you're laid back, but you can't be now. Okay, all right, 10 points, all right, brilliant. Yeah, so you you've got another go. one out as well on the other side. You can find one, one's already out. Okay. Oh, can you? Can you? Go on. Oh. Okay, 20. Get, on, get one. Quick, quick, Go quick. On, <laughs> this one here. This one. Oh, okay, we're out of time. We're out of time. Oh, okay, the adjudicator. Oh, we'll can, can we give her that one? Can we give Can we? It was already out. It was. Okay, because she was the goal scorer last night, I've been told <laughs> you're getting that one as well, all right? So let's do this. Right, We've got 10, uh, 20, 30, 35. Oh, wow. 35 points, you could go to the top of the leaderboard. How high is it, Jill? 35 points, and it is 105 centimetres. So you drew with Ellie in terms of height and Esme, but you go to the top of the leaderboard because you got 35 points. Wow. LJ, Lauren James, not only did you <laughs> smash it last night in the game, you smashed the tower as well. How are you feeling about that performance? Thought I thought I did it quite well. Quite <laughs> I thought you did. Really good. <laughs> Not gonna lie, all right, because <laughs> 10 seconds back. in, yeah, you didn't, you were very <laughs> laid back. Look at the front, that's hanging on to dear life, all right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, okay, because you've, you've smashed it, you've absolutely, yeah, you've been incredible. So top of the leaderboard you go. And I wanted to give you a little president, the president, because I was going to say I'm the president <laughs> of the LJ fan club, so I have a present. A fan for you. you keep me going. A biggest star <laughs> by the point. <laughs> well, you get to keep that one, all right. And I've got to say, you smashed the tower. It's been great to have you here on Lionesses Down Under. Everyone in the studio, round of applause. Laura and James, thank you so much. Incredible last night and incredible on the show as well. Yeah, so do join us tomorrow where... We are going to be joined by Lucy Bronze. And she's going to be competitive now she's seen your score. I can feel this <laughs> Definitely all right. Definitely is. And remember, you can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. Yes, we'll be back 12.30 tomorrow, all right? So just before your Sunday roast, OK? <laughs> you can get in, you can watch us and don't forget to send all of your messages of support. Any questions you've got for Lucy, use that hashtag lionesses down under and we'll see you there. See you Sunday.